finding a job after a PhD. Today, we are here with Dr. Nima Jayawardena. Thank you so much, Nima, for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Park, for this opportunity to share my uh, opinion and my perspectives with the wider uh, academic community and especially the early career researchers. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. So let's start with the first question of what aspects that meet your expectation about finding a job after your PhD? Uh, from my experience, uh, I would say that, uh, yes, finding a job after completing a PhD is another tough milestone, very tough milestone, and always ask help and guidance from senior academics because uh, they were in this particular industry for so many years and like maybe they might have connections. And I also encourage PhD students to get the opinion about the kind of job market and the kind of uh, job requirements uh, which are different from country to country. Just have some idea about that as well. And uh, to that, you need to talk with people, ask the help from your network uh, and support from uh, senior uh, academics as well. And also, one thing that you can do is um, like uh, try to develop a competitive advantage in your CV. For example, let's say you can highlight your teaching experience you had while doing your PhD. And maybe you can highlight your publication history while you're doing your PhD. Uh, maybe you can highlight your technical skills, the kind of learning softwares, the new uh, different research methods uh, that uh, you um, maybe let's say that you are aware of during your PhD. So I would encourage you to have a very good competitive advantage uh, and just highlight that uh, during uh, that you, what you did during your PhD. Um, and also uh, like many PhD students can gain the teaching experience like developing the course curriculum, uh, developing the course syllabus, uh, contact your supervisors uh, and ask for some uh, experience uh, like tutoring experience, uh, like marking experience where you can uh, uh, ask for uh, paper marking experience. Uh, they are senior academics and they will definitely help you because they are also like you uh, at, some, at some point and they, are, they understand the kind of mentality of a PhD student. Uh, ask the support um, and also uh, like uh, if possible, uh, just uh, like uh, if possible, also uh, try to get the guidance from uh, the even from your colleagues. Also, you can get this. Those who have completed the PhD, you can ask their experience and you can ask them to share the kind of experience they had. Uh, like yeah, this is all about academia uh, and again it is different for the industry if it is again if you are like let's say if you are going for an industry job then again you need to have the practical industry experience even volunteer experience internship opportunities those things uh, will be very useful uh, when you are applying for a oh. job Yes. So I, I think you made a very good point about learning from your senior, learning from your colleagues, and also build a competitive advantage about yourself, add more value to yourself, and how this value added actually um, lead you to your current jobs. Can you briefly mention? Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I would like to uh, uh, like real uh, I what I realized was. Uh, the kind of time that I managed during my PhD by doing good publications, by improving teaching strategies, these things actually helped me to even face to the interview because in a lot of interviews, uh, they are asking sometimes for uh, a teaching session. Uh, when it comes to a teaching session, they ask like uh, questions like how you manage the uh, classroom, how you handle conflicts. So there you can answer these uh, practical questions using your experience there. Mm. And also uh, 
another thing is uh, now when you talk and when you uh, talk with your supervisors and when you share their experience when you when they share their experience with you uh, like uh, it is the same experience that you will also face one day uh, like because they are you and your supervisors they are both in the same industry so it is very valuable to talk to share these ideas and it's fine to talk and to share ideas because uh, senior academics they really understand us uh, as phd students uh, like uh, in and uh, also like have a good uh, like mentality where you you are open to listen and uh, just avoid any overconfidence or any things like that because if you have these things then it is hard for your guides to show you the correct path so have this learning mentality as a phd student and you can talk with them mm. uh, ask help uh, support ask support from your network as well uh, because the, the these uh, networking people can also help you and update them all these like milestones what is going on with you keep in touch with them and this regular one on one meetings and regular updates are very important uh, thank you as for my perspective sure. thank you so much for the tips there now can i also touch on the aspect that not meet your expectation about finding mm -hmm. a job after a phd yeah there was one uh, because when uh, at the time when i applying for my uh, my job I didn't had any idea about the kind of location, the kind of job location, like which country I will settle and uh, which country I will uh, want to settle. Uh, I'm from a developing country and uh, my dream was always to uh, settle in a developed country, but I wasn't sure what is the location, whether it is Australia, New Zealand, Canada, UK, uh, uh, that is why actually the reason I applied to everywhere <laughs> to uh, to settle, I applied to all these kind of jobs. Uh, and uh, because I didn't have any idea about the place where I would be working. Uh, so I think uh, uh, when, if you're doing that, then just have some understanding about the uh, kind of country that you're going to settle because from country to country, um, the job requirements and the expectations are different. Uh, even sometimes the titles are different, like lecturer, senior lecturer, associate professor, professor, associate assistant professor, associate professor, uh, reader, professor. Likewise, uh, from country to country, even the titles are different. Therefore, uh, just have some idea about uh, the uh, kind of location as well. Uh, because by the time when I was applying, I didn't have that idea. I can clearly remember that uh, I applied to all these job locations uh, without knowing the kind of requirements uh, which differs from country to country. All right. Thank you so much for, for chatting that part. Uh, and I, I totally agree with you that we might have to do some more you know, research and homework about where the location that we want. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we say something incorrectly or funny, it might lead to a bad impression and we might not get a job there. Now, uh, since you have applied jobs in many, many countries and continents, as you mentioned, do you have any tips for managing job search? Yes. Uh, like, uh, like, for example, if you're going for new locations and new, uh, new systems, uh, then uh, the just uh, go through the websites and just have some idea about the kind of university because I can remember when I was doing uh, a job interview with Malaysia, uh, they asked me, uh, have you go through our website? Uh, why we should hire you? What are the research interests that align with our ongoing projects? There I, 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 I understood that uh, I do not have any idea about it. Uh, there, I think, uh, like, if you are trying to explore new opportunities in a new location, uh, then it is better to, uh, like, highlight and to know about that particular university and the particular location as well. So that is one tip uh, I would like to say. Mm. Uh, and the other one is be prepared. 
always be prepared because a lot of interviews they ask the questions like why you applied here uh, what you know about this university how like as i mentioned earlier how your research aligns uh, for that you need to be prepared uh, review the job description uh, properly uh, the key qualifications the skills the experiences required for this role and prepare examples also, how your background aligns with the kind of job requirements. In my previous institution, I organized a lot of uh, research seminars. So I included, as I mentioned earlier also, I included these uh, flyers uh, and photos in my interview slides. Therefore, try to align what you have with the, uh, what they expect, what the, what, uh, with the expectations of the university. Yes. So those are very good tips, especially for the job interview uh, that you have there. Now, do you have any tips in terms of managing your network and work collaboration that can support and help your job search? Yeah. Uh, and actually, yes. Uh, uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank my network and collaboration for the support provided me in publishing. And I truly believe this journey will not be possible without them. One tip is stay in regular contact with your network, like keep them updated, not only about your projects, about your achievements, about your interests, and also show some genuine interest with their activities and accomplishments. It's like, uh, and also respect them, uh, like, uh, because they are senior academics and uh, they know your journey. <laughs> they know you, how you started, how you uh, struggled, everything they know. So you need to respect them. Uh, even after your doctorate, uh, they are seniors anyway. You need to respect them and offer value to your network, share the relevant information, um, insights, the resources and opportunities with them as well. If you have something with you, then share these opportunities with them as well. Um, and also actively uh, put some efforts to support others as well. Uh, those who do not have a publication, uh, like refer them, the referrals, advisors, collaboration on projects, uh, these things are also important because I uh, one thing I believe is uh, my parents uh, from my childhood what they say is that uh, the all these things are temporary and we take with us the, the good things that we do uh, there we can see that uh, helping others is also very big thing for their life so whenever possible if you think that you can help someone try to do that uh, I think uh, one day, uh, these all these contacts are important. Therefore, I think uh, it is better to manage everyone uh, with the best possible ways you can. Well said there, and a good example that you mentioned from your parents as well. So that is very good. Um, um, because of the time, let's touch on, say, what might be some of the tips that you want to give to people who say about to submit their PhD or one year into submitting their PhD about looking for a job? Ah, okay. Uh, uh, like, for, uh, How do they prepare uh, themselves, that type of thing? Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, apply as many as you can. Uh, it's okay to apply even 50, 60, 70 job positions. Just apply as many as you can. If you think uh, like uh, uh, limiting you to one location is hard then uh, like explore other uh, countries explore other areas even the regional areas uh, other countries that that are possible for you to uh, live explore all these opportunities then you have a very wide uh, uh, I would say uh, a very wide uh, selection with you you will you will have very uh, very big pool with you. Not limit uh, to a specific no. location and order. And then when you say apply as many, uh, so let's say if I'm about 12 months into my uh, 12 months before I submit my thesis, do you think when is a good time for me to start applying? 12 months or six months or when I submit my thesis? I applied, uh, I actually I applied uh, from my uh, second year. I started right. applying from second year. Hmm. Uh, 
there I added that my PhD is pending and I added the completion date will be uh, April 2022. Um, I started from my second year onwards. Okay, when sharing my story, I, uh, I submitted in uh, April 2022 uh, to Griffith University, my particular PhD. Sri Lanka to my home country and there I experienced a very big uh, at that time there was a very higher level of economic crisis going on in the country and uh, after three months I got a job as an assistant professor in India. Uh, th this is what I wanted to say that uh, just apply to many locations as you can because uh, it can be hard to uh, limit yourself to one particular location. For me, uh, I had a huge economic crisis in my country when I finished my PhD and there I had to uh, go to India and to work there uh, because there was a lot of job uh, losses, job cuts, uh, salary deviations. Therefore, I uh, started my journey in India. And then uh, again, I applied to many places. And uh, then I got this offer from United Kingdom. Uh, the, the, so you can also do the same thing. <laughs> like just apply to many as you can because the circumstances can change in mm. your life. Yes. And you also can learn. We also can learn from uh, Unchecked's food job application as well. So I think we 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 get we gain something either way. As long as we hold our emotional, uh, we can manage our emotional. Then it would be good. Now, um, with your success in a number of your job, um, mm -hmm. applicant that you have done in the past in Australia, in Sri Lanka, in India, and in the UK. Do you mind reflect one key aspect that you did so well? that you think that lead to lead you to where you are today? Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I think I identified my life goals properly in the early stage of my life uh, because I started my career as a secondary school teacher. Uh, and I uh, then I started a lecturing and uh, research and then assistant professor uh, and worked in different, uh, like India, Sri Lanka, and then now in UK. Uh, I think uh, I identified what my interest, uh, my, uh, honestly, I identified my interest early in my life, uh, in early stage in my life, because I'm someone who is happy to work with different people, with different research projects, and I'm someone who is really happy to spend time with the young generation. I like to talk with them. Uh, I like to, uh, like, share my experience with them. And thankfully, I identified this aspect early in my life which helped me to be who I am today. I think that is why I'm honestly happy today because uh, like every day when I wake up I go to the job thinking like uh, I do not feel like I'm doing a job. I feel like I'm enjoying this because I'm talking with the young generation. Uh, I'm sharing things with them uh, and uh, it's like kind of privilege to me. Mm. Uh, so I think for everybody, like identify what you really like early in your life, if possible. Uh, even later is fine, but like if possible, just I'd understand what you really like, then the doing a job will be not that much hard. Yes, amazing. And thank you so much for sharing the tips about search, job search, about interview and about many other aspects with us today. And uh, congratulations once again on your new job there. So, thank, you so much. thank you so much for your time. And this is about finding a job after a PhD with Dr. Nima Jayawadina. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pav.